Sin and virtue, good and evil, right and wrong, the compass of morality and all which makes a person benevolent or malevolent, dictated by genetics, upbringing, mentality and personality, and something ingrained in a person's very fibre, almost impossible to change for as long as the person may live. But does this really need to be the case? Or could morality prove to be fluid like many other constructs of the mind? something that could shift and change if only the right key were to be found. Could there exist a magic pill to erase sin? Undoubtedly many have already heard of nootropics or smart drugs, but the concept of morality drugs, now that's a new one. The reason being, morality is often thought of as something far deeper ingrained in someone's psyche and personality. The idea of good and evil, virtue and sin in all its forms, from envy to wrath, greed to lust, sloth to gluttony, and even pride, are all thought to be something a bit more. With the likes of antiquated poems, Dante's Inferno by 14th century Italian poet Dante Alighieri, or The Ego and the Id by Sigmund Freud, or even The Bible, to help guide us through the seas of morality before we land on our own shores, our own conclusions of what it means to be moral. But does such a topic really need to be so profound, or could it be thought of from a different perspective, perhaps one far more flexible, more scientific? Well, Oxford bioethicist and philosopher Brian Earp would like you to think so, citing even a pharmaceutical that could potentially drive moral improvement. To quote, we have already discovered substances capable of shifting someone's personality and values, such as heart disease medication, which inadvertently affects a person's subconscious attitude towards race. Why not one for shifting the morals of a person? Quoting further, Imagine a psychopath who doesn't have the ability to deal with other people's pain, and because of that is more likely than others to commit violent crime. The same being true for those who are overcome by anger and may lash out in the heat of their rage, or those who become so egotistical that they can't even see past themselves to realise or admit to something far better. All these states and conditions have the possibility to now be treated, perhaps to ones more rational, mature or altruistic. He mentions, our moral psychology our instincts about how we should behave were adapted in an environment we no longer live in. We now have access to weapons of mass destruction, global committees to discuss the very climate of our Earth, or boards to discuss total war. All tasks, if done correctly, which would depend upon temperaments more reliable than those evolved in the minds of recently civilized and historically unstable ape hominids. Now, more than ever, we would find great value in rewiring or retempering the moral compass within our heads so to be better equipped for all the challenges ahead. The only question is, what new set of morals would be appropriate, and who could possibly create a medicine so advanced to shift the neurochemistry which dictates morality, and which could bring us to this new mindset? What could possibly erase sinful behaviour and create room for a more virtuous and benevolent person? To which Dr. Earp suggests one thing, the psychoactive supplied and carefully engineered by nature. For hundreds or even thousands of years, traditional societies have used psychotropic substances to catalyse moral learning, to help children transform into morally mature adults. Indigenous Amazon tribes, for example, use ayahuasca to enhance moral learning or has been recently researched, the further example of magic mushrooms and the active chemical psilocybin found within them, which has been proven to temporarily deactivate a person's default mode network, the component of the brain responsible for projections of self or the ego, and consequently, if we trust in the poets of biblical texts of old, all other sinful behaviour attached to the ego. A natural medicine which could go ways in clearing of old mental slates, so that newer, fresher and more virtuous morals could enter. A prospect well worth further research, but one which is now already very worthy of discussion and thought. Could the continuing psychedelic renaissance see all new medicines into the world to help us refresh and retune our moral compass, 
so that we can make better decisions for a brighter future. To quote and to finish, the archaic revival is a clarion call to recover our birthright, however uncomfortable that may make us. It is a call to realize that life lived in absence of the psychedelic experience upon which primordial shamanism is based is life trivialized, life denied, life enslaved to the ego and its fear of dissolution into the mysterious matrix of feeling that is all around us.